In our last segment, we noticed that the shingles on this home looked much worse close up than they did from the ground. And there was no doubt after a visual inspection that a new roof was definitely needed. Now let's continue with our roofing professional, Andy Lindis, as he explains the installation of this unique 50-year shingle. Well, it looks like the guys have prepped the roof and they're getting ready to lay some shingles down. Yeah, we're getting to a point that's really going to start looking like a brand new roof here pretty quick. You know, got it all removed, inspect the roof decking, made sure that the step flashing was done properly. You know, earlier I was talking that this is where they had the leak in the house. Sure, where the new addition tied into the old house. Yeah, well that step flashing wasn't done properly, so that had to be redone, ice and water shield, new shingles are going on there, so they can ensure, no matter if they even get an ice dam again on this roof, which they're probably not going to because we're putting all new insulation, they're not going to have a leak. Now, how important is the tear-off? And by that, I mean, you know, a lot of debris is falling down and potentially damaging the landscaping and the plants that are in place. Is that something that homeowners should be concerned with and be asking those questions before they start a project? Oh, you always want to ask those type of questions. You want to ask every aspect from the removal to the installation to the final cleanup what they can expect before anything ever starts. And it's very important. You know, that's a lot of stuff coming down to the ground. So you want to make sure you drop cloth everything. You can use plywood where it's necessary. Protect your decking, your landscaping, your windows, things of that nature. So when the job is done, you want every aspect of the house, not just the roof, to look better than what it was before you started. Well, I can see some other challenging areas up there. What do you say you and I go up top and we can take a look at some of these components? All right, let's get up there. Now, Andy, before we get into the specific installation process on these particular shingles, let's touch on the other components. Well, we talked about the ice and water shield here. We went with the, uh, the two rows of ice and water in this particular roof. We went with the shingle mate underlayment. It looks and feels different. It almost feels more durable. It is, it's a lot more durable than the ordinary felt. It's actually a fiberglass composite material that goes down. It handles a higher temperature, so it holds up to a higher temperature and colder temperatures, and it lays flatter. So when you put your shingles over the top of it, you get a nice smooth installation. Okay, what about in some of the challenging areas? Like right here, we get a first hand up close look at where the original leak was. Yeah, I talked to you about the step flashing. The step flashing was just down underneath the shingles. They didn't have it go over the top of each row of shingles like we're doing up with uh, these particular ones here. Okay. So anytime water got underneath there, it was able to go right back to the house. Boy, and leak right in, and that's what ultimately led the homeowners to contact you. What about in valleys? This is a traditional, very challenging area to make sure that it doesn't leak. It looks like you went with a lot of ice and water shield. You know, this is, a, again, another line of defense. Of course, we're going to put a W uh, valley in here. Same color the shingles are, so it's going to look nice. But if that valley tin ever fails, or if ice tries to get up underneath there, it's got to go five feet in either direction before it gets to the actual roof decking. And the odds are pretty slim that that's, that's ever going to happen. not going to happen. This will always remain watertight. What about the shingles themselves? I see oh, you have one right over here looking at home. Man, that is a lot heavier than a traditional shingle, isn't it? Yeah, it's about as heavy as a shingle gets. As you see, uh, it is a different pattern, and you have to start with different size shingles as you work your way over. The reason that important, you don't want the seams where two shingles butt up against each other to constantly line up down the roof rake. That can create leaking issues. And when this is a pattern shingle, you can see it's not your standard three tab. You gotta make sure, for a looks wise, that these things are lining up properly. And being that this shingle is so heavy, you have to add three more nails than you would in an ordinary three-tab shingle. There's actually six nails that hold on each individual shingle. So again, that is an installation process specific to this shingle, but very important to the longevity of the roof. You want to have six, you said six nails in each of these shingles. Six nails in each one of those shingles. So the manufacturers tell you how many nails to put in here, but is there any other training that they offer? Oh, absolutely. Uh, as you know, we have a great partnership with this particular shingle manufacturer, GAF Elk. We're certified contractors for them, and they've actually come out and worked with our installation department to make sure that in every single job we're doing it, we're doing it up to their standards, and a lot of times above their standards. So if I'm a homeowner, obviously I should be asking the questions, are you trained, do you know about the products, but what about insurance? I mean, is that important? Do I need to know that they have workman's comp, liability insurance as a contractor? Absolutely. Not only need to, I need to ask them if they have insurance, ask them to see the certificate that proves that they have the insurance. Call the Better Business Bureau. Call the local builders association. Make sure that they don't have any complaints against them. Make sure that they're licensed and bonded, and make sure that every one of the workers that's going to be on your house is insured should something go bad. 
Stick around, we'll be heading back out to our project to learn what's really covered in roof shingle warranties.